Hello everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Infinity and today I have a really special tutorial for you guys. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make socks on the Centro Mini Knitting Machine. This is the one that has like 22 needles on it. 22? Let me look. Yep, 22 needles. So, um, this tutorial, I originally planned it uh, to release back in like March but as life would have it I got really 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 busy and uh, needless to say it didn't happen but this has given me time to experiment with the project uh, make a couple of pairs and see you know what kind of improvements that I would want to make so here is one of the socks that I've made with this fabulous yarn it is a patent croix sock yarn and you guys might be wondering right because it's a one weight yarn you guys are like infinity how did you get that amazing thick looking sock out of that yarn well as you guys may have noticed I double stranded my yarn so I am going to add this yarn to the post that I made about the yarns that work well with the central knitting machine so I'll leave that link down below and I will be leaving my maker notes in a blog post on my website um, and I'll also leave that link pinned in my comments and in my description box so you guys can find that after the tutorial is over so for today what you're gonna want to have is a tape measure um, if you have a loom pick that would be really helpful or if you have uh, like a very thin um, three millimeter crochet hook to help you pick up stitches um, off the machine. You're gonna want a cable needle and this is for when we pick up stitches off of our machine. Uh, we will be doing that at some point, kind of like the fingerless glove tutorial that I did some time ago. And for this particular video I like this one because it's curved and I don't have to worry about my uh, needle sliding in and out of the thing. And you also want some waste yarn. Now I actually had a really bad uh, tangle in my yarn when I started the other sock, so this is actually some of the same yarn that I'll be using for today's project, but I would recommend using a cheaper, more dispensable yarn for your waist yarn projects. Alright, and you can have like a stitch marker or something. This is just a regular knitting stitch marker that I have laying on my table, so I was like, why not use it? Alright, without further ado, we're going to jump into today's tutorial. The cast on pro process is really quick with this one because it's the small one. I'll also leave the link to this machine in the description box. So it's going to be a lot of goodies in the description box today, guys. Alright, making sure my black uh, needle catches the yarn here. Both strands of the yarn. Alright, so for the duration of this first sock, right, I, I set my tension. I used the like middle little hole here but you can also use the smallest one which I did eventually uh, switch to I think in the later rows so we are going to and I have my notes here <laughs> we are going to crank the toe part of this if you're using two colors for 16 rows so you want to do this very slowly and just make sure that both strands of your yarn remain in your tension thing and that your needles are catching both strands of the yarn as you make your rounds this is super important especially in the first uh, few rounds when you're trying to get that foundation going So I'm just going to use my loom pick here and I'm going to um, count up my rows, super important, 
that I want my socks to match. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Cool, sixteen. I was spot on. So I just want to get past my black needle. And there he is. So now that I have my 16 rows, I'm going to get my scissors here. And I'm going to actually cut my color A. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and change my color. Alright guys, now I'm going to change my color. So I have my color A to the right of my black needle. And I'm just going to drop my color B little bit in the center and I'm going to make sure that it's going under that black needle to start my new row. I also have a tutorial on how to change color on the central knitting machine back on my channel um, and it just has a more close-up view on how to do that. But alright, so now I am going to slowly crank this to make sure that all my needles are picking up um, my new color. Also, as a helpful note, those um, 16 rows that we just did in our color A counts for 2 inches. So now we are going to crank up 4 inches. So, like I said, the color A counted up to 2 inches. And then we want this color B to count for about 4 more inches. I wear a size 11, so that total of 6 inches was perfect for my foot size. Um, but you can adjust accordingly. You just have to do all your foot measurements. Alright. And don't worry about this hole in here. We're going to close this up later on in the project. Um, <clears throat> I decided that it would be better to just wait to the end to close up everything with this project. Because like the first pair that I made, I sewed it up on the machine and it was just not good looking at all. <laughs> Which at the end of this video, I'll show you guys a little clip of what the original pair turned out to be. kind of eyeballing this I think I have four inches um, you can stop regularly to measure which I always recommend so let's see get all the way in there yeah so about three and three quarters not bad so all right I'm gonna keep cranking Alright, so I am at 6 inches here, and so what I'm going to do is I am going to switch my machine to panel knitting mode. I'm going to move the tape measure. And this is where our loom pick and our cable needle comes in, because we are going to make sure it won't let us crank anymore. Okay, and we are going to start working in panels, but we're going to be picking up these first three stitches off of our um, machine because uh, we will be making the opening for the heel. So you want to keep an eye on where that black needle goes down. This is always my method for it. It's always easier. So my black needle is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my loom pick between these two little small pegs. And I am going to grab both strands, that's super important, and I'm going to just slip them onto my cable needle. You can take your time with this process. Three. 
All right, now that we have those three guys on our cable needle, I like to slide mine so that they're all in like the bend of the needle and then I just kind of fold my cable needle down in the machine. All right, and this is also the point where I put a stitch marker in my work, pretty much. So actually, what I'm gonna do here is crank a little bit alright just kinda push that down and it'll work so he'll stay out of the way alright and once I get my first row cranked I like to slip the little stitch marker on there because we will be cranking up a total of seven rows. Or I mean eight rows rather. So you want to just be able to keep count with that. So that was my first row. Now I'm going with my second row. Alright, now that I have my eighth row, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my waist yarn, right? And I'm going to be placing it at the bottom of these needles. So, you don't want it, you don't want your machine to catch this waist yarn because it will knit it into your project. So you want to make sure that this waist yarn is at the very base of these needles. So around that black needle, we're going to make sure it wraps around the front, goes all the way down, and around this little ridge right here. And we're going to make sure it goes into the next peg, or around the next pegs at the very base. And the same with this last guy even though that needle is not in the up position so let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit here so you guys kind of see what I'm talking about here they're at the very base and as we switch our machine back to tube knitting we want to make sure that this yarn is not caught in these needles so it doesn't knit into the project so Very, very slowly and attentively, we're going to just yeah, because that one's in the middle. I'm going to make sure. drop that other tail down in our machine. Alright, we're slowly going to crank and this right here is what you want to see. So like you know when you first cast on how you had the bottom uh, loops and the top loops around these pegs you want to make sure that you have that as you continue to crank your socks and so for my version of or my pair of this socks rather from the heel so from where we picked back up here for the heel 
up until I cast off was um, like four and a half inches or 29 rows. And your project is going to twist up down in here. It's not a big deal, um, but I do like to go in and untwist it now and again as I continue to crank out this project. Alright, so I am at my four and a half inches here, so I'm going to cast off. I'm going to make sure my black needle has caught my yarn, and I'm going to actually pull out a pretty decent stretch of yarn, maybe like 12 inches, 14 inches, something like that, eyeballing it. I'm going to cut the yarn. Alright, and I'm going to thread my needle. And I always thread my needle first, um, it's just out of habit. I'm going to crank an entire row without yarn, so we're going to be holding our tail kind of vertically. And we're going to crank. And I always give myself a few stitches of space um, before I get back to this black needle. It makes it easier for me to cast off, so we're just going to go ahead and loop off all these stitches. Make sure you're getting both of those strands since we doubled our yarn. Let's zoom out here just for a little bit. Alright, so I have completely cast off my sock, and I, um, I cinched close the top of it, but we're not going to leave it like that, of course. We are going to wiggle this thing loose. So one of the things that I learned with the first pair that I made was that you don't want to necessarily pull this tight like you would with the um, fingerless gloves. So I actually go back a little bit, and I find the double strand that I just cast off with 
and I pull it up a little bit and then I begin to stretch the sock um, the stitches <laughs> rather around the hair because this is where you're going to be putting your foot into and you don't want to have to struggle to put your socks on that's just not a thing that we want to deal with so I'm just going about doing this um, we'll be crocheting the edge here so you don't really have to worry too much of course you don't want your strings to be sloppy looking but we will be crocheting around this just be careful of what loops you do in fact pull because some of them are not uh, <laughs> um, part of the cast off thing but okay so this one has a decent stretch on it it's decent I'll pull it a little bit more so this is the part you really want to just kind of work there's that alright that's even better that's even better alright so what we're going to do I'm going to grab my 3.75 no my 4 millimeter <laughs> crochet hook this is the one I used uh, for the other sock as well and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go about crocheting around this edge so I always start off with a single crochet because I feel like it's better I chained one and I went into this next stitch here let's zoom back in and I basically single crocheted all the way around here but this time I was more conscious of how I was creating my stitches because I didn't want to make all these big gaps around my project um, like I did with the previous pair. So very loosely with this 4 millimeter hook I started single crocheting around because again you don't want your um, edging for your sock to be super tight because it can be hard to get your foot in there and then you end up stretching the sock out and it's just a really bad time for everybody and um, I use a four millimeter hook because it's close to the gauge of the machine I think the machine is like a 3.5 ish to 3.75 ish millimeter uh, knitting gauge so I use a slightly bigger crochet hook too because um, my strands are doubled. Just makes it easier. Alright, but we're slowly going around here. And not only am I working into each space because it helps the sock to look um, fuller, but it also helps with the edging. Um, it helps it not to be as tight. So essentially, I'm going to have uh, 44 single crochet going around the edge of the sock because I'm doubling the amount of stitches around this cuff. And this is like the same method that I used for adding a crochet brim to my hats that I make on the central knitting machine very similar method all right I have single crocheted all the way around the edging of my sock here so I mean here it is it's gonna curl on you just because of uh, how the edge is with the machine after you cast off so what I did to negate that on this other sock was I created a row of front post back post ribbing and so I'm gonna do that on this sock as well so I'm gonna chain up three 
and I'm going to begin working around the posts of these single crochet here. I wonder if I can get this to focus better. Okay, so I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go ahead and make a back post. Double crochet. And really you can make this edging anything you want, but I thought that putting this ribbing around the edge of this sock would help with the stretch factor as well. And I thought it was also really cute when it was paired with this colorway. It adds a really weird sense of depth to it that's actually really pleasant. So I'm just going to take my time here and front post, back post, all the way around the edging of this sock. And I'll meet you guys back when I'm ready to do the toe and the heel. Alright guys, so I finished front posting and um, back posting around the cuff of my sock. So here that is. And it looks like this one. I mean it's supposed to so um, all right now we are going to put together the toe and the heel so the heel of the sock is actually completely crocheted and the toe of the sock is just sewn together so what I do I just stick my hand in there and um, I, I stick my hand in here and I flip it inside out You might have to kind of maneuver your cable thing so it doesn't come out, <laughs> but it also doesn't get in the way. And I flip this inside out so that the outside of the project will look good um, by the time we get done with it. You don't want all those uh, strings and like uneven edges on the outside of the work. But alright, so it's inside out now. And so for the toe, what I did, once I got my string life together, um, I just kind of cinched it closed. I think I actually closed this gap here first, so I'll focus on this first. So this little gap here from where we did our color change, let me zoom in. This little gap here, what I do is I just kind of tie it together very, very gently. I don't want to cinch it too bad on the outside, but I just kind of, a little light tug, tie it. And I'll put a little dab of fray check on there. And then I'll tie it again. Create a little knot. And then, um, for my other sock, I did weave in these ends I'm kind of plying into the stitches as I weave them in and out um, just so the fibers will grab because this is a wool blend so they're gonna catch naturally but I wanted to add a little extra security and then when I'm done sewing I'm just gonna whip this close with a little knot and I'm gonna hit it with the fray check again And I'm going to do the same thing for this purple string, only I'm going to be going under the purple lines here. So I'll meet you guys back once I have done that. Alright, so now I am ready to work on the toe, um, now that I've woven in these ends. Alright, and so what I want to do, I want to lay this project out completely flat to where the heel, the hole where the heel is going to go is completely open and facing 
up and I also want to um, just try to uncurl what's going on down here at the toe so I'm gonna take a little working but what you want to do is to sew this flat just like this you, you want the heel and the toe to basically line up like this one does. It's on the card right now, so let me see if I can take it off of there. I actually have the wooden blocks coming today um, as I'm recording this tutorial. <laughs> but alright, so as you can see with this completed sock, I have the um, seam where the toe is and the heel kind of lined up here so that's the same kind of uh, situation I want going on with this one so we're going to do that by having this laid out like this and then we're just going to thread our uh, needle again now that we have threaded our needle like I said we're going to cinch this just a little bit not too much and I do this for shaping, so by the time I sew together this toe, it, it'll have that little curve that the other one had. But alright, we're going to start at this end, and we're going to make sure that these stitches are not curled up, so they're not sticking out of your seam when you flip this back on the right side. And alternatively, you could slip stitch this across. I don't know why I decided to sew it together, but I did. And if you would notice, I'm going in about a row or two uh, below where the opening is for this toe just to kind of give myself some leeway here You'll notice me using Fray Check all throughout this project. It's a really handy, uh, like, liquid stitch. Keeps your um, ends tacked down really nicely, and it lasts for, like, years. So I like to have... It's a staple for my craft table. All right. So I just snipped that, and now we can work on the heel. All right. So now we're going to get to working on the heel. So I'm going to try to zoom in here a little bit all right so you have this whole mess here for the heel and it's really not as bad as it appears um in my written instructions on my blog i have basically four rows of crochet here to work up and close off the heel so what i do here is i look basically and see where i have my stitch marker and i go about a stitch before that and I say stitch very loosely because these side things are not stitches per se. They're just like the ends of the rows. But they can work out um, to be stitches. They're kind of easy to work into, thankfully. Alright, so we're going to connect both strands of our color A. And we're going to chain one to secure that. Alright, now we are going to um, work into that same stitch with a single crochet. Alright, now here's something that I learned um, after I made my first 
pair of these socks, right? So, when I put on that first pair around the heel, I was just going under those two stitches, basically, right there. And when I would put it on on my foot, there would be little holes there um, that were open just from the stretch of the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my fabric here and there's like loops, these little garter stitch lo loops on the back of the work. I'm going to insert my hook under one of those or maybe even two of them. And I'm going to then work under those normal stitches as I normally would and I'm gonna just yarn over and pull up a loop. Now here, I will be uh, single crocheting three together, so I'm going to remove this uh, stitch marker. Such a weird stitch marker, but okay. And I'm going to work into that next section, but I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to find one of these loops a little bit further into the work, not too far away from those stitches. And I'm going to insert my hook under that, and then I'm going to insert my hook into these stitches here yarn over and find a little camera batteries okay and I'm gonna pull my loop on through all three of those um, stitches and on the other side you'll see that this cinches the fabric together so you don't have those holes um, so you don't have your like foot showing through your sock all right I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three of those stitches, just like that. Alright, and now I'm going to start single crocheting into these live stitches that I have here on my cable needle. Now, I also work underneath these loops here, like the um, horizontal ones. And it just kind of helps uh, blend those stitches in. So I'm just going to work them off of the cable needle one at a time. And I know you're probably thinking that the heel is going to be a little thicker than, or a little thicker feeling to touch than the rest of the sock. And that is partially true just because crochet creates um, denser stitches, stitches. So that's something to be mindful of. I, for this uh, particular sock, don't know if I would use a single strand or not. You could possibly try that um, if you don't like how chunky the heel could be. But it is indeed handmade sock season so um as the seasons go on I'm pretty sure you're gonna want that thicker fabric anyhow but all right gonna work into this second stitch here the second live stitch and it's okay to kind of pull up on there so you can get your hook into it slide it off the needle all right we're gonna single crochet into those uh, three loops all right and this last one is special because we'll be um, starting to work up our three single crochet together with this one so we're going to go ahead and slide it onto our crochet hook just like that and we're done with the cable needle now I'm gonna yarn over and pull through those three loops all right now we're gonna start working on around this corner so you're gonna find a vertical bar to work into Gonna work into that first uh, stitch, yarn over, pull through those three loops. All right now, we're gonna yarn over and pull through three. And now we have worked our second corner. We're gonna go ahead and single crochet up the side of the sock here.
Alright, and here you can see, like, I had a couple of loops to come apart somehow. These are not part of the stitches that I cast, or uh, recast onto my machine, but I'm going to just work these stitches like I would any other live stitch. Alright, now we are coming up to the next corner. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, three single crochet together. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on my hook. Alright, now I'm going to work across these, uh, this next live stitch. As I get my crochet hook into these stitches, I like to pull out the waist yarn from that specific stitch so it doesn't get confused with my working yarn, especially if it's the same color as my working yarn. So, go ahead and make that single crochet. And making sure you get both strands of your yarn. Alright. And then I have this last live stitch here on my um, waist yarn, so I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into that. And I'm going to pull out my waist yarn and put it to the side because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through those loops. Alright, and now I'm going to go ahead and work on this last corner. So I already have one stitch. I need to work into another one of these edge stitches and another one and then I'm going to work through all three of those loops on my hook alright and so now I can peacefully work down to this first stitch that we created in this row in order to close the first row of this heel. So again, just working into some of these uh, stitches further in. Essentially fusing them together with the edge stitches so that you have a closed piece of fabric um, when you have on your sock. Alright, now I've worked to that last stitch, I can go ahead and slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made in the row. Alright, and now I'm going to chain one. And for this row, it's super easy, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch around.
over it and we're going to close this row with a slip stitch as well. Alright. And so this is what the heel looks like so far. So this row is going to be another row of decreasing. So um, here you have options depending on how many stitches you have for your heel. You can either um, decrease in every other stitch or you can decrease in every stitch. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Here I'm going to do every other stitch. So I'm going to single crochet in this first one and then across the next two stitches I'm going to do a two double crochet. I'm sorry, two single crochet together. Alright, now I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch of the row. Alright, now this last row we're going to single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm just going to chain one here. And do just that. going to slip stitch into that first stitch of the row. Alright, now I'm going to slip stitch my heel closed here. So like I said, you want to make sure that it's lined up with the toe down here. So I have my piece completely flat and I do have my um, opening lined up with the edge of this. So what you can do if you're if your um, row does not end up on the side of your work like mine does, you could cut your yarn and just sew it together. I'm going to slip stitch mine together 
Um, that's what I did for my other sock. So I just went about inserting my hook into sti the stitches from both sides and just slip stitching it together all the way across since it was so, so few needles, I mean stitches. Wow, I can't talk to get today guys, I am very tongue tied. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just easier to slip stitch this across. I think it gives you a really nice, neat seam on the inside and the outside. And then we're just going to chain one and uh, fasten off here. So now all that's left to do is to weave this end in. Going to make sure that's nice and tight. Again, I'm going to come in with my fray chick right over that knot. You don't have to do too much weaving in. Basically what I did on the other sock is that I went down into these stitches below my slip stitch row. And I just kind of wove in my tails through those single crochet. And like I said, this is a wool blend so it's going to catch later on down the road. I don't have to worry about this coming apart. Alright. And now we are done with this and we can turn it on the right side, see what it looks like. looking pretty good here. Alright, and this is what this guy looks like. He looks really long um, before you put it on like a card or uh, your blocking tools for socks. And this is just that end that we actually, well I actually wove in as I went along down here, came out on the other side. I just use a little fray check and I'm going to cut him off there. And this is what it looks like. Now this of course is my personal pair. So like the little imperfection I just saw on the heel, there really is no big deal to me. Um, this one came out a little bit straighter. I think this is just the nature of those uh, couple of stitches that got lost in there. But you can of course do a little pulling and a little adjusting here and there with these stitches to get them to uh, lay flat. But yeah, so this is how you make socks on the Centro knitting machine. Oh my goodness. So when I finished the first sock here, I was so just blown away by how squishy this sock was and excited about this tutorial. And so I look forward to uh, modeling these socks maybe in the future in the near future over on Instagram. So keep an eye out if you're not following me over there already. Head on over there. That link is in my description box as well. Um, these are great for gifts, um, especially during crunch time. It only takes about an hour or so to stitch up these socks on the machine. So they're perfect for that and you can use an assortment of fibers. Like I said, I'm going to leave the links to my central blogs uh, down below because I have a list of yarns that do work in the Centro knitting machine really well. So I'll leave that there for you guys, as well as the blog post with the written instructions for how to do this uh, project on the Centro. I hope today's video was helpful for you guys. If so, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. All of that helps the channel. It helps me reach more people. Um, don't forget to check me out on other social media. I'm on pretty much everything except for Snapchat and TikTok. I have a little something out there for everybody. 
um, you can check out my blog like I said for extra tips tricks and uh, patterns I just released a couple of patterns actually here recently so you guys can check that out over in my uh, free pattern shop and I also have a paid pattern shop but they're both located on my website anyway guys until next time happy making So these are the Centro socks. I I can't tell you guys how blown away I was when I cast this guy off. Um, he was super squishy and soft and in part because of the yarn but I think also because of the knitting process so I've never actually hand knit socks. Um, they intimidate me but I thought that it would be kind of fun to test out um, how to make these things on the central knitting machine and like I said I meant to do this back in March but that didn't happen and in that time I got to experiment with the project and see you know what works best and what doesn't and so I think I finally hashed that out in today's tutorial these are perfect for last minute gifts, let me tell you, because you can crank these out in about an hour or less. And then, you know, you can use a variety of different yarns. Again, I'll be leaving my um, central blogs pinned down below or in my description box because I do have a list of uh, yarns that do and don't work in the central knitting machine. And I'll be adding this, this yarn <laughs> to that list soon. And until next time, guys, happy making.